So what happened, right? Why at the very last day of the yarn shop hop are we just now getting together? Well, some good and some bad things happened as everything does. I have plans, the plans get thrown out the window. Sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. Like it happens every single year. And in fairness, I've only done this hop two years in a row. Each year, it's just been crazy. Let's start with the best thing though. I officially made it to all 12 shops. So yes, 2023, I can check that off of my bucket list. I made it to all 12 shops, filled out my passport, got a stamp from every single shop, and I also got a stitch marker which I will show these up close and everything, but every single shop had a different theme and each one of them had a different stitch marker. You collect them all and the final one, you got this little thing that you can keep all of them on. Personally, I am gonna put them on my spider web with the rest of my stitch marker, but I think that's really cool that they had this all together. Like I like everything at the end of it. It was, it was just, it was fun. The very first day I was able to get 10 shop visits in. I do not ask me how that happened and how it went. I know you and I chit chatted and I had it written out. I was like nine, I can get nine done. But in the back of my head, I was like, there's no way. Like there's just no way that I'm gonna get all these done. Well, I did more. I got 10 shops in for the first day. So at about eight o'clock at night on, what was it? Thursday was the first day of the hop. I was in the car driving back home and I was like, okay, I was gonna do all of my editing tonight for like, you know, every single day, but I only have two more shops tomorrow. So like let's just wait do the two shops and then download everything and we'll have just like one giant hop all together with every single shop in a row and that way it'll just be uh, we'll just see them all at once Okay, so fast forward to Friday. I go to my last two shops. Again, I get the little pin thing. Yay, celebrate, all done. Come home and I realize that almost 90% of my footage is just not usable. That's what I was spend all of yesterday doing was trying to salvage as much of my footage as I could. And honestly, it just was not a lot. Okay, so here's what happened. I had two cameras with me. One was for the car. I just had that in there set up ready to go to like chit chat about the store, the yarn immediately. And then I had another camera that I brought into the shop. I'm at Amuse 2320, which was my first shop. Everything went great. It was fantastic. It was super freaking cute. And I'm like walking, walking, walking in my giant platforms. And what happens? I trip. My camera goes flying, uh, literally my heart drops. And I'm like, this is my actual nightmare right now. I run to pick it up and miraculously, not a crack, like not a crack. My case or like the cover over the lens was like a little bit scratched, but it wasn't cracked. I take the lens cover off cause I was like, well, obviously it's gonna be distorted with the cracks that are in it. So I'm gonna like pull that part off or like the scratches, you know what I'm saying? Open the viewfinder and the picture looks fine. Like there is no crack, there's no distortion. There isn't like a little blurry section or anything like that. It looks totally fine. So I pack everything back up and start to go to my second top which is the Northfield yarn. Get there and just kind of power through the rest of the day, not even thinking anything about it. After I downloaded everything, it turns out that there was a crack and I don't know why I wasn't seeing it on my, like my point of view in the little camera. I wasn't seeing it. Once everything was downloaded and I blew it up on my editing program, there were not only cracks, but there was like distortion on the edges, like bleeding into it. So long story, short I do need to get a new lens now for my camera which is not a big deal the bigger deal is that every bit of footage that I took for this hop is just not usable. Like I was trying really hard yesterday to be like, okay, maybe if I like zoom in on this side or like crop this part out, I can get a little bit something from it. But at, you know, at 10.30 at night, last night, I just had to call it and was just like, you know, it's the curse of the yarn hop for me, I guess. Like <laughs> year number two, something had to go wrong. The first year I didn't make it to all of the stores. Second year I made it to all of them, but I have no footage for it. So, you know, it is what it is and I figured I still want to chit chat about it. Uh, I do have the footage 
from Muse 2320, so you can see how awesome that setup is. Every store had their own sub theme of under the sea, and I will chat about the ones that I can remember. Some of them I was able to actually get a pattern from, and the ones that I have patterns, I will talk about that too, but not every store had a crochet and a knit version. If you're here and you still wanna hang out with me in the yarn dungeon and chit chat about some of the finds that I got, cause I have the yarn. I can show you some of the yarn that I got as well as a couple other random things. Grab some coffee with me. All right, let's get in to Muse 2320. So walk right into the shop. The theme of it was shipwrecked. So pirates, lots of skeletons, lots of skulls everywhere. I might be a little bit biased, but this one was definitely my favorite theme. Not only that, but some of the skeletons had mustaches too. So, you know, you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> also, now I can chit chat about it, but I was lucky enough to be a crochet tester for Muse 2320. The pattern, I didn't even take one of those because I was a pattern tester, so I have the version of it, but it was a cowl bandana with a skull on it, and the skull came in two different options. So the knit version was reversible. The crochet version, you could have two different options. So it's a skull with two crochet hooks underneath it or two skull bones. Both of them are amazing, and I really do kind of want to put mine two together. I know it's going to end up making it a little bit thicker, but I, I still like it. So I'm going to do another one. So I've done two so far, like finished. I'm working on my third one. And these are the colors that were extremely popular. Yeah, not only that, there were two special colorways, two versions of the pattern. And each pattern had two special colorways. This was just an option for people that didn't want to do the color work, but wanted to actually have the bandana. So it's just gonna like wrap around like this. And I have a stitch marker that I made here. This is what's gonna hold it together once it's all done, a little dancing skeleton. Right now I just have it on one of these little things because I don't need it as a stitch marker, but I thought that would be kind of perfect for when it's all done. And I'm almost like halfway through. Like it, it, it gets a lot easier because it's a bandana, you know, so it gets a lot shorter. Every single row does power through it rather quickly. And especially with the stripes, there's no color work on it. So that obviously goes a lot quicker too. I was really, really excited to be a part of the pattern testing for my favorite local yarn shop. And also it was a skull pattern, you know, like it just, it was too perfect. The pattern is going to be available online on Monday. So if you weren't able to make it to Muse 2320 during the hop, you can still not only get the pattern, but the colorways are going to go on pre-sale too. So both of the colors, so I have this one. I think I have a little of the other one left. Let me grab that. I don't know what happened to the brown, but the brown went with this color. I think I'm going to make fingerless mitts with this. Like I really really liked this color with the dark speckles in it. It kind of makes it look like a grungy type of off-white yarn. I really, really loved this. These two together are the ones that I have right now that I'm working up. Almost looks like confetti or like diluted sprinkles, which I'm totally here for. So we have those little bits there. So if you like these colors, there is gonna be options to pre-order so you can make your very own skull bandana. I think it's really fun that even if you're not able to make it to the hop, that you still are able to get into the fun of the colorways and also the pattern. So the fact that she has this available on Monday, don't forget that, on Monday. Now, if you've been wanting to get into color work, but you've been like a little bit intimidated because there are a lot of different ways that you can go about color work. Basically, you have an entire graph and the entire project is graphed out on that graph paper. You have ones that are either like printed out, sometimes on Stitch Fiddle. That's also a fantastic place to go to make your own color work projects. But anyways, it's it's a whole nother world of crochet and I really enjoy it. There are some things that you need to know and some techniques and stuff. So I did do a really quick crochet 101 tutorial of color work and three different options that you can go about doing color work. And all three options work 
for this pattern. So that will also be available when the pattern is available. Do use her colorway with it too, so you can see it in motion. And I'm not entirely sure which skull I used, but I think it was this one with the brown. So if you wanna see the brown all worked up with this, I don't know. Anyways, it's just, you might wanna check it out. Even if you don't need to know how to do color work, you might wanna check it out just to see those colors. Probably gonna be something that I'm gonna continue with, honestly. I think if you have anything that you're like, I would love to know how to do this in a crochet, Tunisian crochet, anything like that. I feel very confident that this is going to be a fun new section that I'm going to add onto the Alt Knots universe, like Tutorial Tuesday or something like that. Because you know I love puns, so we have to play around with that. So if you want to shout out anything, maybe you want to know how to block or how to slip stitch, like basics of crochet, anything you want to see up close and personal. I loved that Muse's stitch marker was the biggest out of all of them, like the chunkiest anchor out of all of them. I love a good statement stitch marker so it came with this and then a little ring to attach to it there was another ring you could put on but that was just for knitting so I opted out of that because obviously I don't need that and I did end up buying some lobster clasp and some little o-rings to attach onto it that way I can use it for all my crochet projects but this one is just great I think this would look good too on the bandana I might actually do that now because I do have quite a few stitch markers and Summerween is coming up, I feel like, on my skull bandana. I don't know, we've got options anyways. Next, I went to Northfield and that one had a really cool uh, gray speckly type of yarn and their theme was Norwal. So do they have, yes, they did. They had a Norwal stitch marker. I'm just gonna actually dump them all out. They had some people that had crocheted little armigurumis of Norwals. They had horns hanging from the ceiling. They had cute little backdrops to take pictures. Like it was set up so freaking cute. Also, all of the coffee shops, I just thought of that right now. All of the coffee shops that I went into, that footage is gone too. Okay, so except for Muse 2320, which right across the street, so like backtrack, we're back in Hastings, Minnesota. Right across the street is Geek Haven and they had themed coffee. Okay, so I had to try like all of them. Let's be honest, I had to try all of them. The marshmallow latte, magic. Magic in a cup, I would drink that all day. And I am not a sugary latte type of person in any way, shape or form. So I was a little nervous about it. I was like, mm, I don't know, but it's a specialty one and it goes with the theme and I love everything that's on theme. So I'm gonna try that. It was so worth it. There was also a lavender latte, which I got that one iced and I would like to have that every single afternoon for Summerween. Like, that was so freaking good. It wasn't overpowering sweetness. It was just like a hint of sweetness and the lavender punch through. Like it was intense in your face, which I personally enjoyed. But yeah, if you didn't like the lavender scent or smell or taste or anything like that, cause like opening the lid, I was like, woo. I love lavender everything. Lavender cookies, lavender lattes, literally anything that lavender can be put in, I want that. And the yeah, album. This was so freaking good. Now we're back to Northfield yarn. Uh, and honestly, after this, I don't remember what stitch markers go with what. That was, I was really counting on my footage. I'll just show them to you and we'll chat about it. All right, starfish, adorable. We've got a little sun. I'm pretty sure this one was Stephen B. We have a snowflake. Some fun things that happened at Stephen B. I got to meet in person a couple of ghouls from the ghoul squad. So, so freaking happy that they said hello because it's just, it's so chaotic. You get into every single shop. There is just so much going on and everybody's kind of like doing their own thing. So I am so glad that they both stopped and said hello because I love chit chatting obviously and like that's why I go to these events is to chit chat with other creators so the fact that like in person got to meet these ghouls I just it was it was a great moment yeah a uh, fish the fish I'm gonna guess was darn it yarn their colorway was called school of fish 
And it was like oceany, diluted type of blues all throughout. The mermaid, I remember the mermaid was Knit and Bolt. Another place that I love, they have a really cool coffee shop right next to it. So I got a hot latte there. I think I got a vanilla latte. And then walked into Knit and Bolts and then also got to meet someone who's like, I know you. And so again, so very happy that you said hello and chit chat a little bit, talked about the pattern. Um, do I have that right here? No. So either I didn't grab it or it's still in the car, one or the other. One thing that I did really love from Amazing Threads is they, instead of printing out their patterns, they gave you a card. And the card has either the knit or the crochet version, or like you have both right here. And on Ravelry, the patterns will be available, it looks like for the week, starting on Monday. And so you can just go ahead and print it out there or download it. I really appreciated this because personally, I would much rather download all mine. I use my iPad for all of my patterns. And so I have a bunch of like folders in there. And also when I'm doing patterns, I like having it on my iPad and to like, you know, zoom in, zoom out, highlight things. I much more prefer it that way. Also, I don't run the risk of losing it because I lose paper patterns all the time. So I really, really enjoyed that option. I think that's really cool. And maybe more shops will start doing that. I know that it's the whole in-person shopping, like people like to have the instant gratification, right? Like you want the colorway and the pattern that goes with it right then and there. A lot of people actually start working on the pattern that day. So, you know, I don't think that ever is gonna go away, but I, I personally really like the digital version too. They had a really, really fun setup for taking pictures too. Let's see if I can remember. Jellyfish, they were jellyfish, yes. So the last two days, they gave me a separate bag. I already had one, but I didn't have it with me. It was in the car. And they were just like, you know what? Just take another bag. Here you go. Okay, I love this jellyfish. Look at that thing. They had a ton of jellyfish hanging from the ceiling. All of their yarn set out was just like super beautiful. Immediately when you walked into Amazing Threads, they had a bubble machine going in front. It's the little things, honestly, that just make the experience so freaking fun. So A plus Amazing Threads, loved the bubble machine. I may or may not have walked through it a couple of times, like walked in and then as I walked out, just kind of like, twirled around in the bubbles because like, why not? Apparently I have never been into the yarnery. I, for some reason, thought that I had. I've used their yarn before, but I must have got it from somebody else because I, either that or I have no memory of going into the yarnery. It was super, super cute. There was also some fun Easter eggs because I found Muse 2320's yarn there. There was some sock yarn that I was like, I do not have that color of Muse 2320. So I thought about grabbing it, but I was like, you know what? No, it's the shop hop. There's a lot of humans coming through here that are not local. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. But I wrote down the name to send to Sarah and be like, hey, I don't have this colorway. Please let me know when you're restocking this because I would love to get into that. Also, she had this one purple that was super, super vibrant. And if I have it in footage, I'm gonna insert it like right here to like go back to, but it was super, super vibrant. And I was like, oh my, my gosh, for Halloween, this would be so perfect as a bookmarker. I don't know why I was thinking of bookmarker, but I was like, I want some of this and maybe in a fingering weight yarn and that with some black and do like some spider web bookmarkers or something. I don't know. Off track there, the yarnery was incredible. They had not only yarny stuff, but they had accessories and they had cute, cute, cute packaging for all of their kits. So they had the kits up in front of the yarn that they had, which I actually did purchase this one because not for me, but I know someone that would adore these color combos. So I already have like a gift ready to go. Well, like as soon as I make it, like we're gonna be good to go. Look how cute this is. Okay, and so they were all set up and we have these little donuts of yarn and all of them like stacked up together. It just looked like a bakery in front. And it was so freaking cute. Everybody was very welcoming when you went in there where they were like, hello, are you here for the hop? Let me chit chat about it. Here's our kits. How freaking cool are these kits? Oh, 
There's something like, oh, there is a button in there. Well, I was excited about the yarn, but now we have a button to get into too. The entire kit is called Midnight Sunbather. The pattern that came with it, I am actually gonna work that up with this kit. The person that I'm gonna make it for, I know is gonna love it. It's like a little wrap, like light and airy. But this one, how fun is this tag? Look at that. The yarn colorway is freaking beautiful. Polar sea ice is what it's called. A one ply superwash merino fingering, 100% superwash merino, 100 grams, 400 yards. And then on the bottom, it has this website you can go to, obviously hand wash and lay flat to dry. It is just so beautiful and incredibly soft, obviously. Hello, Blossom. Anyone that loves nature inspired colorways of yarn, I feel like definitely check this one out. Okay, the next one is a white. And I did ask because there were some that were out of the box and they were all stacked up. And I like immediately went to touch it because it's like soft and fluffy, right? Like we want to touch and squish and everything. And then I was like, hold up. Is this mohair or is it alpaca? Because one is much better than the other for me. Human was like, no, 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 it's alpaca. We are aware that many, many people are allergic to mohair, so we opted for alpaca instead. And I am so glad that they did because otherwise this would have been a hard pass for me. I unfortunately can't work with mohair, which is just so sad. Like it never ceases to make me sad because it's so beautiful. But anyways, this one is, 50% baby alpaca or 55% baby alpaca. It doesn't have a name. 9,500, that's the color name for this one. An off-white is what I would say it is. And then the last one that goes with it is this dark blue. So there is a much brighter blue, but I preferred the Midnight Sunbather for sure. And this is color number 9564. Again, same brand, same alpaca percentage too. I'm not gonna be able to leave this stuff out because my cats love alpaca and they will start messing around with it immediately. Oh yeah, the button. What is the button? Oh, okay, so I've seen this all over their Insta and I don't know why I didn't put the two and two together. This goes on the shawl. I'm probably gonna keep it, to be honest, and put it on my backpack that has a bunch of my buttons. The person that I'm giving it to doesn't need to know, so like nobody tell. I'm just gonna keep the button. I ended up getting a sticker too, because they had a one yarn sticker. So for my yarn cart, I'm gonna put that on there. They had stickers, they had magnets, they had water bottles, they had a bunch of different stuff, and they had some tea and since this is the year of exploring tea for me i had to go ahead and try this hibiscus tea i've been finding that i really really love that well this one is called misted mountains in days of yore and it's a black tea with hibiscus and sage and it says it contains caffeine but then also it tells you how to brew it like how long to brew the tea for maximum yumness. There is a little website that you can go to, but this is uh, made in Duluth, Minnesota. So I was like, you know what, let's try it. They had a bunch of different kinds, but the hibiscus, it's always calling to me. So that's what I got. And this is the colors that they were drawing inspiration from. I mean, so perfect, right? We've got the yarn displayed down here from here, like spot on. And this, is what the pattern is gonna look like. Super incredibly lightweight cowl, and the fact that it's crocheted on an angle, I love that. I love the look of everything together. I might end up, like if I go through this entire thing, because I'm making this to gift away, after I finish it all up, if I like it, I might end up using some different colors, maybe some like orange and blacks, or like black and red, alpaca, and make one for myself because it looks like a super fun pattern. They had a ton of different kits and it varied from like amigurumi to wearables and accessories. I thought that was really fun because sometimes when you go into a yarn shop, you're not really looking for anything in particular, right? Well, I know I'm not. Like a lot of times I'm like, I don't really know what I want to make, but I just, you know, stopped in this yarn shop. I haven't been here before. I don't really know what I wanna do. And so by having 
an, a section like that of like inspiration at the very least to just like grab and go projects. I think that is such a fantastic idea. Oh yeah, they also had candles too. So if you want to buy a project, like all the materials for your project, you can go ahead and grab a kit. You can grab some tea, light a candle, just like set the whole mood. It was so perfect. We're going back tracking again. We're going back to Amazing Threads. Super random, but I was looking through all the yarn and then I saw this like red fluffy stuff. It was almost the exact same color of my hair. So I was like, oh, okay, drawn to that. I'm like digging through, pulling out all the yarn balls very carefully. There was a nice little shelf above. So I like pulled them all up there. Um, anyways, I pulled this thing out thinking it was yarn. No, it was a clutch. This is the coolest clutch that I have ever seen. <laughs> so I had to have it. Almost exactly the color and texture of my hair, so I needed it. I was thinking of using it as like a notion bag, but really I don't wanna like put it away. I want to be able to have this out every single day and like walk around with it. It just like goes with all of my outfits. There is a little bit of faux leather and then to hold on to it, there's a little faux leather strand. I'm not super big on the brown and red combo. So I just grabbed a skein of this Plymouth Select. It's DK Moreno Superwash, which was ironically right over top of this just like screaming, here you go, grab me and crochet over this. So that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm just gonna keep this exactly the same way as it is and use a little bit of this stuff to crochet over the top. I probably just do like a slip stitch all the way around this and it's gonna make it a little bit fluffier too. So yeah, the most random thing that I was not expecting to get during a yarn hop. By the end of this hop, I was so tired like there is just so much energy coming at you and especially i did 10 shops in one day i wasn't really expecting that everyone's feeling a certain way we're excited we're happy we're like a little bit anxious because we want to get the colorways we want to see them so like there's just a lot of things happening literally by friday afternoon i was like i need to take a nap and it needs to be quiet i i can't have any tv on i don't even want to look at my ipad like i don't want to do anything like that so on the way home, I stopped at Barnes and Nobles because that's what I like to do when I need to totally decompress. Need to be away from screens. I, I don't even wanna have a movie on. You know that I'm super tired when I can't have movies on even. All I really wanted to do was read a book, like an actual paper, like book in hand type of deal. And all of the books that I have at this moment that I was excited about reading was in audible form because that's how I power through most of my books throughout the month. Stopped at Barnes and Nobles and snagged a couple of Darcy Coates books. So there's another fun story that goes along with this. I walked in there, couldn't find the Darcy Coates section and was like about to get really like super sad and you know, actually shed a tear because I was just so overwhelmed from the day and all of the events and everything. And then I found an amazing human that was right next to the section that I needed to ask a question for. And I was like, can you help me please? <laughs> I need a Darcy coat books. I just want to snuggle up and read it and have some coffee. And they're like, absolutely, I will help you. Here you go. So they suggested this one, which all of these were on my list. But at that time, my brain was just mush and I needed help. Like that's what it was. So Hunted by Darcy Coates. This cover was it was speaking to me like I, I'm loving the color combo loving everything about it the back of it said her disappearance wasn't an accident her rescue will be a mistake right like we're intrigued we're ready for it got it pick it up let's go started reading this one and I'm already on let's see if I can find my page Page 72, got pretty far in that one, then fell asleep, took a little nap, woke up, started this one. Well, I went to start this one because the next that they suggested was The Twisted Dead. Again, color combo calling to me, literally anything Darcy Coates really, but like the color combos, yes. So these were the two that I snagged and I woke up from my nap. I was like, oh, I'm gonna start to read this one. Then looked at the bottom and I'm like, this is book number three in a series. And I haven't read the first one or two. So like, that was my bad. Cause I'm sure this human actually mentioned that. And I just like, wasn't processing. Got back into the car and went to a different Barnes and Noble that was a little bit closer and snagged two 
and one. So normally I don't like committing to series books before I read the first one, but I just kind of took it as a sign from the universe. I was like, I got book number three and I'm just going to take it as I'm going to love it. So I kept book number three. I had already thrown the receipt away too. That was the thing too. So it was genuinely a sign to just like go get the first two. The, okay. So the first one is The Whispering Dead. This is Alt Knots colors right here. So I'm really, really hoping that I'm gonna like this series. The back said she hears them whispering and it just looks so freaking cool. Series, and then book number two is The Ravenous Dead. Teal and black again, and we have some vines. I will be starting to slowly read these. I only read the actual like paper books when I, before I'm going to bed or when I'm getting up in the morning, but, we are officially in the 15 days of Halfway to Halloween, which if you don't know, I do have a 15 night countdown for Halfway to Halloween movies. So if you wanna follow me on Instagram, every single night I'll be watching a different horror movie or just like spooky movie in general to get you into the Halloween vibes. I mean, cause we're halfway to Halloween here. Like it's less than 200 days before we get to Halloween. So we gotta do all the spooky stuff here. Um, but anyways, so I will be um, watching those and I watch the ghoul log in the morning so I might actually read too because that's a nice background soothing noise to have on if you've never watched the ghoul log or I guess you don't really watch the ghoul log it's just a nice background to have a little ambiance of pumpkins there's two different pumpkins and then there's the mad god ghoul log that was my favorite it's the newest one from last year that was my favorite and I'm I just started that one today I I think I've repeated it like three times and I'm pretty sure it's like an hour so it's just an hour you have that on and it's like perfect, but for reading to it, it's really nice. Cause I, I do like having some sort of noise while I'm reading a book. Yeah, I might actually get started on that. All right, ghouls. So that was an adventure and not at all how I was expecting to wrap up my yarn hop of 2023. But we did it. We can check it off our list now of things that I have done all 12 shops in one hop year. Again, if you're interested in any of the patterns, I'm not entirely sure if every single shop is making them available on Ravelry, but I know for sure that Muse is. And also I will link the yarnery down below. If you liked these colors or you like this pattern, there will be options and different variations of the yarn on the shop too, if they're not doing specific like pre-orders for this, but also they have tea. So like, you know, just go check it out. Give them a visit, check it out, grab some tea, grab a candle, grab a sticker. Okay, but that is it for me today, ghouls. So thank you for hanging out with me for this entire crazy ride. I appreciate it. If you did end up going to the hop and I missed you, please shout it out down below. I would love to know which shops you went to, what yarn was calling to you this year, and your favorite pattern. Obviously, I gotta know. Like, if you started a pattern already, please let me know. But for now, that is it. So have a fantastically spooky rest of your day. Cheers, and I will see you in my next video.